أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربي سدني علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين إلهي أمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I welcome you all to our hereafter walkthrough session number five So far from the moment we have embarked on our journey we had a pretty long ride as to the travel time if you remember, not too long ago, you died and went on board for your sail to Barzakh. Death always sounded pretty traumatic, but alhamdulillah, you made it through. So here we can see a verse in Surah Yasin, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Translation, indeed it is we who bring the dead to life and record what they have put forth and what they left behind and all things we have enumerated in a clear register. So let us ask ourselves, what legacy do I wish to leave behind? Similar to a Fitbit, but technologically more advanced and more powerful, or the records of the angels where each and every footstep of ours is recorded, whether it was for a positive cause or a negative cause, every movement is recorded. But the interesting thing is, if you are a true believer, if you are a pious Muslim, then something special happens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Duqan regarding the time when Fir'aun and his soldiers drowned in water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ And the heavens and the earth did not weep for them. So the question is, do the heavens and the earth, do they weep for someone? The cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he was presented the same question and he responded, when a believer passes away, the gate is closed. Which gate? The gate through which his good deeds used to ascend through the skies and his provision used to descend from the skies. So the heaven misses him and weeps for him. The place of prayer on earth where he used to pray and remember Allah also weeps for him. But the people of Fir'aun left no trace of righteousness on the earth and they had no good deeds that ascended to Allah. So the heavens and the earth did not weep for Fir'aun and his soldiers. مَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Can we even comprehend this? This means that apart from the people on earth who are missing you, who are missing your presence and they're weeping for you, who else is crying for you? The heavens and the earth. They are weeping for you because they are missing your good deeds. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that privilege as well. Amen. So when we talk about the day of judgment, the Prophet wasallam informed us regarding some of its minor signs and some of its major signs. As far as the minor signs of the Day of Judgment are concerned, SubhanAllah, all the minor signs have already been fulfilled. That affirms our faith in the truthfulness of the Prophet Indeed, all the events as foretold by our Prophet have proven to be true. So insha'Allah, the remaining signs of the Day of Judgment will be acknowledged in the near future as well. The Prophet ﷺ said, signs of the hour are like beads fastened together by a thread. Once the thread is cut, they fall one after another. 
this tells us that the major signs will take place immediately after one after another until the trumpet of Qiyana is blown. However, for each one of us, the day of judgment has already arrived as soon as we see Malikul Maut, as soon as we see the angel of death. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Yes? Yes. Is it clear enough? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. it is. Yes. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, so going back, we remember that each one of us, our judgment has already arrived as soon as we see the Malikul Maut. So going back to your tribal itinerary, Alhamdulillah, you made through your transit of Barzakh, and now you air travel to your third station, which is the plains of Yawmul Qiyama. Yawmul Qiyama means the day of Qiyam, a day of long standing. So now your GPS is going to halt for some time. You are now standing all alone in a state of worry and apprehension. And there's pin drop silence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Taha, I number 108, Yawmaidin Yatkabi'una on that day, mankind will follow strictly the color of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No crookedness will they show him, and all voices will be humbled for the most gracious Allah, and nothing shall you hear but the low voice of their footsteps. That's how silent each one of us will be. So we are marching to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the day of judgment commences. Every prophet will lead his own nation. The kafirin and mushrikeen will be questioned about their faith as to why they didn't accept Islam once they received the message. Different categories of people will be judged, the Muslims and the hypocrites. So now the Muslims, they will be divided into two groups, the sinner Muslims and the pious Muslims. The day of judgment is also known as the day of regrets. That day, the sinner Muslims are going to be regretful for their actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Maryam, وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ قُدِيَ الْأَمْرُ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ وَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ And warn them of the day of regret when the matter will be concluded. And yet they are in a state of heedlessness and they do not believe. So that day, the day of judgment is going to be a day full of regrets for some people. But their regret will not avail them anything except for punishment. So let us look at the list of people in this category and what sins they committed. We already discussed list number one, which included a person who committed certain deeds of goodness, of righteousness for the sake of showing off. Now we will discuss about a person who did not pay his zakah. Zakah, as we all know, is one of the five pillars of Islam. So this is a must. We cannot be oblivious from fulfilling the rights, the haq of the poor members of the society, if we own a certain amount of wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the state of this person in Surah Tawbah. He says, وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِضَّةَ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ 
يَوْمَ يُحْنَ عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمْ فَتُكْوَى بِهَا جِبَاهُهُمْ وَجُنُوبُكُمْ وَظُهُورُهُمْ هَذَا مَا كَنَسْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ فَذُوكُوا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْنِدُونَ And those who hoard up gold and silver and spend them not in the way of Allah announce unto them a painful torment. On the day when that hunts money, gold and silver, the zakah of which has not been paid will be heated in the fire of hell. And with it will be branded their foreheads, their flanks and their backs. And it will be said to them, this is the treasure which you hoarded for yourselves. Now taste of what you used to hoard. This will be the state of a person on Yamul Qiyamah. May Allah forgive us and protect us. So we have to be very careful regarding our zakah. If it is due, we have to pay our zakah. Number two, the second person on this list is a person who is arrogant, a person who has kibr. Arrogance is something which does not befit a believer. What's the definition of, a, of kibr? To reject the truth and belittle people. So if a person lived a life of haughtiness and pride, then what will be his state on the day of judgment? The Prophet ﷺ mentioned to us in the following hadith. He said, the arrogant will be gathered like small ants in the form of men on the day of resurrection, overwhelmed by humiliation from all sides. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Amen. Who is number three on this list? There will be some people to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not speak to them on the day of judgment. And there are numerous ahadith which mentions about them. Who are these people? A, the one who swore false oaths about his goods for sale, saying that he has been offered more for them than what he is being offered. B, someone who takes false oaths in order to take a Muslim's wealth wrongfully. C, the one who reminds others of his favors. D, the one who lets his garment hang down below his ankles due to his pride and haughtiness. E, a man who denies his surplus water to the traveler. F, a man who swears allegiance to a leader in order to receive rewards. If he does not receive any reward, then he becomes disloyal to his leader. A king who lies. That's G. H, an old man who commits zina, who commits adultery. I, a poor man who has kibber, who has arrogance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not looking at a person, not talking to a person. If you imagine, this is not something trivial. In dunya, if your husband doesn't talk to you or your children ignore you, how does it feel? It's painful, isn't it? So it will not be easy for the sinful Muslims to face this as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, Ami. So that day, the stress will be on its peak. Every person will disown others. Everyone will be worried for their own selves. So you see people around you. You're able to recognize your parents your family members, your friends, and you try to seek help from them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this picture in Surah Abasa, in which he says, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ That day shall a man flee from his brother, وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ And from his mother and father, وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ And from his wife, and his children. Every man that day will have enough to make him careless of others. So you may be having false hope 
that your husband may help you or your parents may bail you out, but everyone will be in a state of nafsi nafsi. They will be worried for their own self. Now there will be another category of people to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not even look at them. Who are they? Number one, who disobeys his parents. Number two, the women who imitate men. Number three, a man who approaches his wife from where it is not permissible. And number four, a the youth. Who is this person? He is a man who permits his woman, for example, mother, sister, or wife, to engage in illicit relations with other men. So in the category mentioned above, category one states about disobeying parents. Why? Because it is a serious sin. The Prophet Sallallahu said, every consequence of sin is delayed by Allah as he wills until the day of resurrection, except for injustice, disobedience to parents, or severing the family ties. He will hasten the punishment of those who commit them in this world before he dies. So this is something which is serious. This is something for which the punishment is even hastened in dunya. So we should be very, very careful about it. Who are parents? If we really ponder about it, who are parents? They're the ones who sacrificed their entire youth in order to nurture us, in order to educate us. And when we reach maturity, should we simply forget about them? Should we never talk to them? Should we only become engrossed in our own things, in our own chores? When we talk to them, should we rebuke them and harm them? No, that's not fair. It's even against human rights. No matter how close or far away they live from us, we should try to give, we should try to give them time. We should try to address them with respect and love, inshallah. Next category is of those people who are wealthy in dunya. They spend their wealth on themselves only and disregarded the rights of others. The Prophet ﷺ said, those who are more, most satisfied in this world, they are going to be hungry for the longest time on the day of resurrection. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Amen. Now you will also notice, meanwhile, when you're standing and waiting, there are some people who are standing with a banner and you wonder what is this all about and it will be said he is the betrayer of so and so it will be a sort of a large flag placed behind his back and it will be a cause of humiliation for the person to be exposed in front of all others this is for those who betrayed and cheated. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Amen. Then you will also see people being punished on the day of judgment who were double-faced, who were never consistent in their actions. They used to present one face to one person and another face to another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Amen. Same applies to a person who stole from the spoils of war. He will be carrying what he stole and his sin will be exposed. The scholars say this also applies to a person who stole from the rulers, who stole from the employees or workers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Amen. Next category includes the rulers, the employers, who remained aloof from their people's needs. 
the Prophet وسلم, said, whoever is put in charge of any of the affairs of the Muslims and remains aloof from them and pays no attention to their needs and poverty, Allah will remain aloof from him on the day of resurrection and will pay no attention to his needs and poverty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So different people will be going through their trials, their examination, and each one of us will be tense, will be distressed. So as we are moving along, we will come across a group of people who will be punished because they seized someone's land by force. The Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever seizes any portion of land unlawfully will be swallowed up by it on the day of Qiyamah and will sink to the seventh part. May Allah protect us, Amen. So these are all serious punishments which are given on the day of judgment itself before the person has even entered hellfire. These are the punishments which are given to him. Then meanwhile, you are standing, you will also notice some people who will stand on the day of judgment with scratches on their face. This will be the state of those people who begged others while they were self-sufficient. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Amen. Then there will be two other people whom you will notice that they are being punished. They will be the ones who lied regarding a dream. They boasted to people about seeing something in a dream they never saw. And another person who used to eavesdrop on other people's conversations when they dislike it. These two will be punished as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from such punishments. We seek the refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being afflicted with such torments. Amen. So now as time is passing by, one by one, names are being called out. Just like there are some people who are being punished, now there are some people who are content. And you wonder, who are they? They have the red carpet treatment. After the prophets, they are the shuhada and murabitun. So now, from category one, the thinner Muslims, we're going to category number two, the pious Muslims. So you see them, you see the shuhada, you see the murabitun having honor and prestige, and you're pleased to see this sight. And you tell yourself, subhanAllah, they deserve it. They were radiallahu anhum. They lived a life seeking the pleasure of Allah. So today they have achieved the merit of being a valedictorian, alhamdulillah. After them, another subcategory of people who will be honored on the day of judgment will be the pious Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, in Surah Yunus, Ala inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahsanun. الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون لهم البشرى في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة لا تبديل لكلمات الله ذلك هو الفوز العظيم No doubt, verily the awliya of Allah No fear shall come upon them, nor shall they grieve Those who believed and used to fear Allah much For them are glad tidings in the life of the present world and in the hereafter. And honestly speaking, when I read this verse, it literally gives me goosebumps to think, can I really qualify for this? Because the awliya of Allah is a big title. 
They are the people who love Allah and rush to earn his pleasure. We really don't know if we're even worthy enough for it. But yes, we try and we try our best and we stay hopeful in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we do not despair. So glad tidings for the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for a specific attribute of theirs. What is it? Those special subset of people who established Salah regularly. On that day, when we are all in a state of anxiety and trepidation, our faces and limbs will shine due to the traces of wudu. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to include us amongst these chosen people. Ameen. And again, this is a special reminder for myself and you that each time we feel lazy to perform wudu, remember this. It will be a source of honor for us, inshallah. So let's be happy and grateful for this gift each time we pray salah. Insha'Allah. So as the day proceeds, you see another category of people who are shaded. And you wonder, who is it? And you are told, this is a person who extended the time limit of a debtor or bathed his debt completely in dunya. This is going to be his reward today. And he is going to be in the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when there is no shade but his, subhanAllah. So as you glance at all these people, of course, you are just standing there. You time travel in your mind and you visualize the snippets of dunya, how you were with people, how kind and compassionate you were towards them. Despite the fact if someone was black or white, rich or poor, a near relative or a far off friend, you always hastened to help them out. You did all that for who? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you wonder to yourself, will my goodness help me today when I need it most? And alhamdulillah, you will be told, whoever relieves a Muslim of some distress, Allah will relieve him of some of his distress on the day of resurrection. SubhanAllah. And inshallah, this will be a mode of comfort for you. And you will pronounce the words of gratitude and shukr. Alhamdulillah. So the day of judgment, the day of questioning is going on. Your heart is beating fast. Each person is going through his trial. And just that very thought is making your heart sink that it's soon going to be me. My turn is coming soon. My name is about to be called out. What judgment will be passed on me? Will I pass or fail? Your thoughts are soon interrupted. As you observe some people seated on thrones of light, your eyes are simply awestruck and you think to yourself, oh my God, who are they? And you are told this is the reward for those who were just in their judgments towards their families and in any matter which was entrusted to them. SubhanAllah, you wonder to yourself, was I fair and just with my family members? Did I favor one of my children over others? Did I violate the rights of any of my relatives? Did I or didn't I? Well, I hope not and I wish not. I pray not. So in the midst of your thought process, you see some people who are being honored because they used to free slaves. Alhamdulillah, Islam came to eradicate slavery. So that's the reason why a lot of emphasis 
and reward has been kept in store for those who freed the slaves. So now you are, of course, surrounded by all sorts of people. And in the midst of all of them, you will notice that some of them are more prominent than others. You wonder in amazement, wow, who are they? And you will be told they are the muazzins. They are the people who used to call out the adhan. The Prophet ﷺ said, the mu'athins will have the longest necks of all the people on the day of resurrection. And of course, by long necks, it doesn't mean that they will look like giraffes. It's an analogy to show that they will stand out in the crowd compared to others. SubhanAllah. They will be recognized the adhan that they pronounced throughout their lives to call people for salah will be of high value for them on the day of qiyamah, insha'Allah. So next category of people who will be honored will be the people who grew old in Islam. And rationally speaking, an old person is someone who is not like the youth. The youth are strong and energetic. However, the old, they are feeble. They are weak. Their bones have become feeble. They suffer from insomnia. They suffer from sleepless nights. They encounter a lot of health issues. Despite all this, they are regular about their salawat. Their throat hurts, still they persist reciting the Quran. Their bones hurt, still they pray on time. In some cases, they are even neglected by their family and peers, and they are isolated from the community. Yet, they bear all these tests patiently, remotely, all by themselves, with nobody to seek help from, nobody to turn to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this person will be honored as well, insha'Allah, a person whose hair turned gray in Islam, subhanAllah. Then what will happen? Then the mizan will be brought. Then the scale will be brought and justice will be established. According to some scholars, the book of deeds will be placed on this scale. According to another opinion, the person himself will be weighed on these scales. So my body weight and your body weight on that day will depend on the amount of hasanat we performed in the dunya. And the third opinion is that the deeds by themselves will be weighed on the scale. So how do we reconcile between this? The scholars, they reconcile between this by saying that perhaps all these three things will be weighed. The book of deeds will be weighed on the scale. The person itself will be weighed on the scale and the deeds by themselves will accumulate some type of form and they will be weighed on the scale. And the end result will determine whether a person is successful or doomed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, so whoever does an atom's weight of good will see it. And whoever does an atom's weight of evil will see it. Nobody will be responsible for anyone's sins except for the one who initiated the sin and encouraged others for it. Those people who inspired others for evil then they will be the ones 
who will carry the burden of their own sins plus the sins of others as well, whoever they misguided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Quran. He says, And verily, they shall bear their own loads and other loads besides their own. Then what will happen? The book of deeds will be brought for the pious Muslims. Their books are going to fly to them and land on their right hands. However, for the sinner Muslims and the disbelievers, the hypocrites, the book will land on their left hands. Now, some people, when they see all this, they are going to try to outsmart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they will place their left hand behind their backs. But what does the Quran tell us? The book will automatically attach itself behind their backs and will land again on their left hand. So no one will be spared. Each one of us will receive our book of deeds. So the question is, what is this book all about? This is the book which was recorded by the angels when we were present in dunya, when we were alive. This was the work that they were doing 24 seven on our shoulders, working tirelessly to record our daily motion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sketches the scene vividly in Surah Kahf, where he says, Wa al-kitab. فَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَلَيْهِ هَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا And the book will be placed in the hand and you will see the criminals, the mujrimun, fearful of that which is recorded therein, they will say, woe to us, ya wailatana, what sort of book is this? That does not leave either a small thing nor a big thing, but has recorded it with numbers. And they will find all that they did placed before them. And your Lord treats no one with injustice. So we notice that even though the day of judgment is the day of justice, an extra element of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be added for the believers. What's the evidence for that? The proof lies in the very fact that when the angels recorded your evil deeds, they recorded each evil deed as one sayhiya, as one evil deed. However, when they recorded your hasanat, they multiplied each hasana by 10 or sometimes up to 700 or more. SubhanAllah. We learn the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this. How merciful is our Rabb? And definitely his mercy, his rahmah, supersedes his justice, subhanAllah. And then the questioning will begin. The questioning will begin. So what is the first question that will be asked? The first question that we will be asked will be about our salah, about our salah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the first of his deeds, for which a person will be brought to account on the day of resurrection will be his salah. If it is good, then he will succeed and prosper. And if it is bad, then he will be a loser and he will be doomed. If anything is lacking from his obligatory prayers, the Lord will say, look and see whether my slave has any voluntary prayers and use that to make up whatever is missing from his obligatory prayers. 
then all of his deeds will be reviewed in such a manner. Imagine the magnitude of this pillar, which is salah. Something we feel pretty lax about it. Something we feel which is only entitled for us on the day of Jummah or Ramadan. This is incumbent upon us five times a day, every single day, to the point that if we are sick, we are instructed to sit and pray. If we are unable to do that, then we should lay down and pray. But this is not something trivial. Without this visa, we cannot pass the border. Many a times, alhamdulillah, we pray salah, we're regular about salah, but our hijab is not covering our hair properly. Or sometimes the hijab is too transparent. At times, our sujood are incomplete. Our ruku are incomplete. And we have to study about them. We have to fix them because these are the rukun of salah. They are the arkan of salah. The Prophet Sallallahu instructed us to perform sujood on seven bones. The forehead and the nose, the two hands, the two knees, the two feet, they should all touch the ground when we perform sujood, when we prostrate. But many a times we do not even realize that we are making a mistake that our sujood is not proper. At times, alhamdulillah, we try to meet all the outward conditions. Our wudu is complete. Our limbs are at peace. Yet the element of khushu is missing. We will think about all our errands in salah. The text message that we need to send, we'll think about it during salah. The profile that we need to update on Facebook, we'll think about it in Salah. So basically, our mind will pay attention to each and everything in the entire world but Salah, except Salah. So this is something we have to safeguard it. This is a gift. Many a times we don't even know the meaning of what we are reciting and we continue to do it on and on and on with the same repeated surahs over and over again, but we have no clue what we are reciting. This is a gift which was given to the Prophet Sallallahu during the journey of Mi'raj. This gift of Salah is so special that the wahi regarding it did not come down from the heavens to the dunya, rather the Prophet وسلم, ascended from the earth to the heavens in order to receive it. This is that special. And why is this special? This is special because this is our direct communication with our Rabb. When we are one-on-one -on -one with our Rabb, so we should take it seriously. We should feel eager about it. And we should take it as a pleasure rather than a burden. Insha'Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to beautify our salah. Amen. So the next question that will be asked is about five things. The Prophet sallallahu informed us. We will be questioned about life and how we spend it youth and how we used it, wealth and how we earned it, wealth and how we spend it, knowledge and what we did with it after we received it. In the olden days, maybe we could have presented this excuse to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Rabbi, I'm so sorry, I wasn't able to fix my salah, I was never able to understand the Quran because I didn't know. I did not know much about Islam. No one ever taught me. But now, now, with technology and media, we have access 
to every piece of information out there with the click of a button. The whole Quran or the entire Sahih Bukhari is available on PDF to be downloaded. We can access any teacher in the whole world with an access of a button. Just think about it. We do not even have to leave our homes to seek knowledge. What excuse can we present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment if we are asked about our knowledge? Can we really say, I don't know? Then the next question that will be posed to us will be about the luxuries that we enjoyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Quran. Then on that day, you shall be asked about the delight you enjoyed in this world. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned to us, the poor muhajireen will enter Jannah 40 years before the rich muhajireen. And of course it makes sense since they didn't own much for which they will be held accountable for. And this is something so scary. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us an easy reckoning because subhanAllah, if we compare our times with the olden times, we are literally living like kings and queens. We are able to control our own temperature in our homes, in our cars. SubhanAllah, everything is out there for us for access. We don't even have to travel out to seek knowledge. So many things we are able to do easily due to the electronics, due to the machines that we have. So Alhamdulillah, we are so blessed. We are really living in luxuries. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us an easy hisab, an easy reckoning. Allahumma hasibni hisaban yasira an. Then we will see that the questioning will also take place regarding our parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, وَأَوْفُوا بِالْعَهْدِ كَانَ مَسْؤُولًا And fulfill every covenant. Verily, the covenants will be questioned about. So what are covenant? Covenant are the promises that we do. And promises can be verbal or non-verbal. Apart from the verbal promises that we make, as a member of a family, being a good daughter, being a good wife, mother or sister, they all fall under the category of non-verbal contracts. Working as an employee, standing honest, staying honest and abiding by the guidelines of the job is a trust. While we are driving, sticking to the traffic rules is an amana, is a trust. So all these things are covenants that we indulge in on a daily basis. And we will be questioned about them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Ameen. Next on the list are our faculties. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Verily the hearing, the sight, and the heart of each of those ones will be questioned by Allah. So alhamdulillah, we're blessed with hearing, with sight, with hearts. Ask those who cannot see, ask those who cannot hear. Alhamdulillah, how grateful we should be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But gratefulness, gratitude is not just saying alhamdulillah. It also means that we're truly grateful by our heart. So we use our eyes to see what is good. We use our ears to listen to what is good. And we stay away from the things which are haram. We use our heart for a purpose to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please the people around us, rather than using it for sin and haram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Ameen. So all this questioning, it takes time. 
it takes time. So it's totally understandable why this day is so long, since each and every person will be questioned. And while all this is going on, you will notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rebuke some of his slaves for their shortcomings as well. And we observe this in the following hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, and this is hadith Qudsi, and hadith Qudsi is that hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioning the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah will say on the day of resurrection, O son of Adam, I fell ill and you did not visit me. He will say, Ya Rab, how should I visit you when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, did you not know that my so-and-so servant had fallen ill and you did not visit him? Did you not know that if you had visited him, you would have found me with him? O oh, son of Adam, I asked you for food and you did not feed me. He will say, O oh Lord, how should I feed you when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, did you not know that my so-and-so servant asked you for food and you fed him not? Did you not know that if you had fed him, you would surely have found the reward for doing so with me? O son of Adam, I asked you to give me to drink and you did not give me a drink. He will say, O oh my Lord, how should I give you a drink when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, my so-and-so servant asked you to give him drink, and you did not give him. Had you given him to drink, you would have surely found that reward with me. SubhanAllah. That tells us what? That tells us that each and every good deed will be weighed we will be hungry for hasana. We will be hungry for good deeds and we will wish, I wish I had helped so and so, but I slapped off. I wish I had fed so and so, but I ignored. I wish I had said salam to so and so, but I stayed oblivious. I wish I had sponsored an orphan, but I was too engrossed in my own self. This is how important hukukul ibad are. But we ignore them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Amen. So now you're standing there and you are engrossed in deep thoughts. And suddenly, suddenly, you hear your name being called out. And Ya Allah. You are scared. Oh my God, it's your turn. Your heart sinks down. Your body starts to shiver. Your bones start to tremble. And all the creatures from the beginning to the end have their eyes on you. You are on the spot. And inshallah, inshallah, we hope for good. What happens next? Inshallah, we're hopeful that this happens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings you closer to him. And you wonder, what's going on? Now listen to this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will bring the believer close to him and shelter him and cover him. Then he will say, do you acknowledge such and such a sin? Do you acknowledge that and that a sin? He will say, yes, O oh my Lord, until he will have acknowledged all his sins and he will think to himself that he is doomed. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, I concealed it for you in dunya and I forgive you for it today. And then you will be given your book of you. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, you can't believe your eyes. You can't believe your ears. Really? All your sins were concealed? You were not exposed? How come? And you wonder, how did that happen? 
and you are told because of your seeking maghfira and dunya when you asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dunya Allahumma ghfirli ighfirli coming from ghafara means to cover so today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed your sins just like he concealed them in the dunya number two the reason why you are protected today is because you protected and safeguarded the honor of so and so. And if you remember in session three, we discussed about the reason for Adab al Qadr. One of them was Namima, gossip. A person who wishes to defame others, so he gossips with each and every person he meets. And he tells them, so and so did this, so and so did that. But contrary to that, what did you do instead? You concealed the sins of a person. You concealed it in dunya, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed your sins today. Alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah. So you will be pleased with your deeds. And inshallah, if you are a good believer, this will be the scenario. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose you to be this person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose us for this honor. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِ فَيَقُولُ هَا أُمُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَ إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ حِسَابِيَ فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَ فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَ قُطُوفُهَا دَانِيَ كُلُوا وَاشْتَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا أَسْلَفْتُمْ فِي الْأَيَّامِ الْخَالِيَةِ Then as for him, who will be given his record in his right hand, he will say, here, read my record. Surely I did believe that I shall meet my account. So he shall be in a life well-pleasing. So inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you hear this good news. This will be the happiest day of your life. You will not be able to believe it. Really? You succeeded? You will be so happy, subhanAllah, that you are going to be sharing this news with everyone. So you will ask all your friends to read it. And this would be something you would want to post. You would want to tweet. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram will be all live that day, right in front of you you would like to share the news with everyone and you will be able to share it worldwide right in front of you live from the beginning of creation to the end with the ins and the jinn hashtag my book audience yes you will be extremely overjoyed and this is indeed true success true success now, subhanAllah, apart from the good news, of course, there is a possibility of hearing bad news as well, isn't it? So that's clearly dependent on our deeds of dunya. There are certain nullifiers of good deeds as well. If we indulge in them, then they can harm us on the day of Qiyamah. So the Prophet ﷺ described to us a person who will be muflis on the day of resurrection. He asked the Sahaba, do you know who the muflis is? Who is a bankrupt? They said, the bankrupt among us is the one who is without a dirham or dinar. He ﷺ said, the muflis in my ummah is the one who comes on the day of judgment with salah, with siyam, fasting, and zakah. He comes, but he has insulted so-and-so. He has falsely accused so-and-so. He has eaten someone's wealth. He has split, spilled someone's blood. He has struck someone. So his good deeds are given to them. If his good deeds 
finish before that which is upon him is not paid off, the sins of those people whom he oppressed are transferred into his account. Then he is thrown into the fire. And this is very scary. So we should be cognizant of the fact that this is serious info. Bankruptcy in dunya is something which can be fixed. But bankruptcy in akhira will have serious repercussions to it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Amen. So well, we might wonder, are there any freebies? Are there any special coupons or a special voucher? Yes, there is. But that is solely dependent upon deeds that you performed in dunya. Something which is very simple, but inshallah, you can do it. It needs some effort, but you can do it, inshallah. Because now there's no special voucher. Now there's no special coupon. It's something that you did knowingly or unknowingly, but alhamdulillah, inshallah, you will be rewarded for it. Because akhira is only a place of recompense, whereas dunya is a place to do hard work. So what are they? Certain deeds, for example, good conduct. The Prophet wasallam said, the heaviest thing that will be placed in a person's balance on the day of resurrection is good manner. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates the obscene, immoral person. Another thing that we are told by the Prophet wasallam are two kalimat. He said two words which are light on the tongue but will weigh heavily in the balance and they are beloved to Ar-Rahman. They are subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al -azim which means glory and praise be to Allah, glory be to Allah, the Almighty. And imagine, will you not wish that these kalimat come on the day of judgment and they are placed on Mizan and your scale of good deeds tips over? SubhanAllah. It makes your deed, it makes your scale really heavy. So insha'Allah, we need them. We surely need them, subhanAllah. And we all need these freebies. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and grant us the feet to do them, insha'Allah. So what's next? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned to us another kalimat. He said, alhamdulillah, fills the scale. And saying, subhanAllah, wa alhamdulillah, glory be to Allah and praise be to Allah, fills what is between them. So again, this is also something which is easy. While you are cooking, while you are driving, you can just say SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, and inshallah, it is going to benefit you, inshallah. So apart from these kalima, something which is verbal, if we can improvise on our dealings, on our khuluq, just a little bit, and beautify our manners, then that will deem beneficial for us as well on the day of Qiyamah. Because Islam is a deen which teaches us collectiveness. Besides the fact whether we are an introvert or an extrovert, when we deal with people, we have to make sure we try to address them with respect, with honor, learn to control our temper, Speak that which is good. Let go of old grudges or grievances. Forgive and forget and be good. Because this good conduct will be beneficial for us. So we all truly need this on the day of Qiyamah, inshallah. So next, every nation will be told to follow that which it's used to worship. So the people who worship the sun will follow the sun to the hellfire. The people who worship the moon 
will follow the moon to the hellfire. The people who worship their idols, their gods will be made to appear before them and will walk before them and they would follow them in hellfire. So all the mushrikeen and the kafirin will go to hellfire. Then who will be left? There will be only us, the believers and the hypocrites who will remain standing, who will be left behind. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show his shin. It's mentioned in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ Remember the day when the shin shall be laid bare on the day of resurrection and they shall be called to prostrate themselves to Allah, but the hypocrites shall not be able to do so. So the believers will follow the Rabb. The hypocrites will remain standing. They will not be able to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because in dunya, they refuse to prostrate to him. And then the sirat will be set up. And the believers will be given their lights. And they will cross the sirat. But the light of the hypocrites will be extinguished. And it will be said to them, go back to your rear and seek a light. Then mercy will be placed, will be put up between them with a the gate therein. Inside of it will be rahmah, will be mercy, and outside of it will be torment. So this would be sirat. So the question is, what is sirat? That's the next stage on Yawmul Qiyamah that we all have to face. The Prophet ﷺ described to us about this bridge. He said, trustworthiness and ties of kinship will be sent and will stand on either side of Sirat, to the right and the left. So this tells us these two things are very important. What are they? Trustworthiness and ties of kinship. So the Prophet ﷺ said, the first of you will cross it like lightning. I said, the person who was asking the Prophet ﷺ, he said, may my mother and my father be sacrificed for you, Ya Rasulullah. How can it be like lightning? He said, have you not seen lightning, how it goes and comes back in the blink of an eye? Then some will pass like the wind or like birds and fast horses. And the speed at which people will cross will be according to their deeds. And your Prophet ﷺ will be standing on the Sirat saying, O oh Lord, save them, save them. Until the deeds of the people will be failing in strength and a man will come who would only move by crawling. At the edges of the Sirat will be hooks hanging ready to catch anyone whom they are commanded to catch. Some will be scratched and saved, and some will be piled up in hellfire. Can we imagine the intensity of this? We will be given light on Sirat according to our Iman, according to our Amal. And if we slip, then below is hellfire. Below is hellfire. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and enable us to cross this bridge like lightning, inshallah. So inshallah, with that cliffhanger, I will leave you for the next class, inshallah, till next Saturday. So what's the action plan? The action plan for today is that we all should study the Quran and teach it. We should all study the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, and emulate him. Only if we learn the Quran and Sunnah and practice it, we will be able to practice good akhlaq like our Prophet وسلم, will be able to know the difference between good and bad. So time is vital. Start your Quran study right now. 
so that you and me were not regretful about it on the day of judgment. So we should not delay. So inshallah, next week, we will discuss about hellfire and the different types of shafa'at that will take place on the day of judgment. There will be people who will be thrown in hellfire. However, due to the shafa'ah of the Prophet ﷺ and other shafa'at, there will be people who are pulled out from hellfire due to these intercessions. So this is very important for all of us to know so that we can secure ourselves from the hellfire, inshallah. So we will discuss all that next week, so stay tuned. With that said, we will conclude our class for today. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka, nastaghfiruka, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al اللهم آنس وحشتي في قدري اللهم ارحمني بالقرآن العظيم واجعله لي إماما ونورا وهدى ورحمة اللهم ذكرني منهم ما نسيت وعلمني منهم ما جهلت وارزقني تلاوته آناء الليل وآناء النهار واجعله لي حجة يا رب العالمين أمين سمامين اللهم إني أسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our deceased members as well, the people who have gone and they have started their journey for their hereafter. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their forgiveness and our forgiveness. So, Allahumma ghfir li hayyina wa mayyitina wa saghirina wa kabirina wa dhakarina wa unthana wa shahidina wa ghaibina Allahumma man ahyaytahu minna fa ahyihi ala al-iman wa man tawafqaytahu minna fa tawafqahu ala al-islam Allahumma la tahrimna ajrahu wa la tudillana ba'dah O Allah, forgive our living and our dead our young and our old our men and our women those who are present and those who are absent. O oh Allah, whomever you give life from among us, give him life in faith. And whomever you take away from us, take him away in Islam. O oh Allah, do not deprive us of this reward and do not lead us astray after him. Amin ya Rabbal Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.